previously on Hack 5. I'm going to lock the vehicle, so don't touch anything. So I locked it. Okay. And now, because I know you really want to get in there, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll work on seeing if maybe we can get in the vehicle or be able to get in there through some other means. Okay. So we'll work on doing that. Set a couple things up. Okay. Oh, there you go. Oh, well, thank you so much, stalker. So how'd you figure this out? Because this is pretty freaky. I was working on a few other exploits that I'd been working on for some replay stuff. Yeah. Tim, uh, who I, you know, I presented with in the past, a yeah. great guy. I know Tim. I was talking to Tim about a couple things and he kind of said the same thing. He's like, well, wait a minute, how did you come around this path? My mindset was, what might somebody neglect? Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I looked at was, well, rolling codes are designed to stop you from unlocking cars. Right, yeah. What happens if I just replay a bunch of lock sequences at a car? And I found out that some cars don't know what to do with that and they freak out. Ford was not one of them. But when I was doing the, that same process that led me some vulnerabilities in some other vehicles, what I found is that Ford had a very unique reaction and from that I said well how could I push this further and what else could be done with it yeah and as I did that it started opening my eyes to the fact that wait a minute I can actually replay a former code and then I started figuring out that there was a, a reset happening to the count so was that the point where you posted that Twitter video of you like sitting in a window like <laughs> five stories up out the window being able to unlock the car so what I did there, I had waited, I'd spent about a month getting a hold of Ford. Yeah. I made sure that Ford knew and everything. And that was two to four weeks after that point. Okay. After I'd let them know about it, I finally went ahead and said, hey, I'm gonna go ahead and, and release this just to kind of let people see about it. Because um, I think it's important for people to realize that it's out there yeah. and to be careful of yeah, it. Yeah, it's very you important. Know, you know, I want people to be able to fix it. If your key fob stops working, there are actually some things that you can do yourself to reset them and there's also let's things. talk about that because okay. i, I want to i want to know how to fix this i've had a real life stalker that has shown up at my workplace yes. and i had to let have like my male co-workers walk me to my car for a few months and i had to get the cops involved like it was scary so how do i fix this with my own car like whether it's a ford or any other kind of car so i'm only going to speak to ford right now because i that one right there if you come out and your key fob just isn't working, like you haven't had any glitches or anything, and all of a sudden it just doesn't work. My first thought would be my battery is dead. <laughs> yes. So if you're at home, a lot of people will immediately do what? They would grab the other one. Because when you buy a new car, it comes with two. Yes. So to do the denial of service, I only need to be able to listen to one key fob. To gain entry, start the car, do all the features you can do with your key fob, I have to be able to listen to both. So I can almost force you into that scenario there, or we right. do the A and B scenario, like I said. Yeah. But if you have a key fob and it quits working, one, be aware of that. Two, make sure you know how to use your key to open it. Also, something else, Ford has a light system and every vehicle That's has crazy. a code that you can enter in here and also set your alarm and unlock it. Oh. So know your code. So my older car doesn't have this, but it does have a key fob. Yes. So I just need to pay attention to how to unlock the thing. But now, to reset your key fob, well, for example, do you have that key fob that we were using a few minutes ago? Uh, Darren has it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you go ahead you go. and try to lock the vehicle? Oh, darn. Did your key fob it's get shut working. off again? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I shut your key fob off while we were talking. So what I want to be able to show you is that you can look up in your Ford how to program an extra key fob. Like if you have kids, you can set it up so it can only drive so fast. They have some great features. Now, wow. to program them like in kids mode, yeah. usually it's in the cup holder. A few of them will have a little area up here to put it in. But if you come to your cup holder, I know that this works in the Mustang, the Raptor, and the Expedition. You'll actually see a little area inside there oh, wow. that is a little notched out divot. So if we take your key and again, it's not doing anything, right? So what? if I start the car, still doesn't do anything. Yeah. However, if I take the key fob that does not work, I put it inside there and I start the car, it will now. Oh, no way. 
it works again. It resets so your key fob. That's a way that as the consumer yourself, you can reset your key fob. I'm gonna save so much money. So <laughs> that way you're able to do this. Now, if you, are, awesome. if you are programming like a child's key or anything for a Ford, you do have to have two keys that are already programmed to it to make like a child's key or a third key or okay. fourth key. But to reset if your RF isn't working, so the technique where, hey, I had to get in using my keys, right? Yeah. Because this car doesn't have the keyless entry, the RFID entry, right? Because of that technique, once you got inside, make sure you're safe, get to a safe location to see if it was a replay attack. You can put it in here, restart, and if the fob starts working, then you know. You may want to be aware that that is a possibility. Oh my gosh, that gave me chills. That's so creepy. So, so but with this attack, you can't actually like, you know, Grand Theft Auto the car. You can't steal you it, You right? can't. Okay. So, uh, one of the things that I did, um, you know, because with my Raptor, it has remote entry and everything else. So, I started it. I plugged into the OBD2. I looked at things in the car and, you know, did a couple features like that. But one of the things that I did was I actually went and I used the manual transmission bypass. And the moment that I shifted it out of park, the car shuts off. So Whoa. Ford has been very well, that's good. secure in making sure that you can't drive off yeah. with one of these vehicles by doing that. You would have to do another higher, very high end level attack um, that I don't know if it's out there or not, but that's what you would have to do. You can't just start it. But the fact that you can start it has some of its own little intricate parts like some of the CAN bus data. So I feel like they should get a little bit better about educating their customers whenever you get a new car or even a used car about how to reset your key fob as well as how to enter your car as if you're like a valet driver because that's what that is. It's a valet key. Yes. And if you're able to do those two things, then you should be a lot more safe whenever you're dealing with these kind of attacks out in the wild if somebody actually used it. Absolutely. And again, um, I don't want to slam Ford at all. I, I just want people to be aware that if they have these vehicles, know that this is out there. We were hesitant about releasing this and then one of the things that finally came about is after speaking to Ford, you know, I think they're going to do the right thing and I think that they're working on fixing things in the future and I just want to make sure, you know, as a father and everything else, making sure that protecting people that are out there by telling them this is why you need to know every feature your car has. Yeah, totally. You need to know that by you need to know that door bypass code. Yeah. You need to know how to take your key out and put it in there. There are some cars like <laughs> if you haven't done that, that would not be something you'd want to do in a no. sketchy area no, without No, absolutely. So, but now that you've practiced it, you could probably do that in a matter of moments. Mm -hmm. So, while you would be delayed getting in your vehicle. The other thing I want to reemphasize is if it has that keyless entry, even if I do an RF replay attack against you, you can still get in your car. Yeah. Even with me doing the RF replay attack against you, you can still start your push button starts because it still does the communication that it needs to. You just won't be able to remotely lock or unlock it. But okay. if it does not have the RF door piece, I can stop you from unlocking the doors or opening the trunks until you take that key out. Good to know. So, so by the RF door piece, you mean like when you put your hand over the lever and you're able to open it because it senses your hand there. So it, it you senses, the yep, your senses your hand and then it, it actually sends a message out to the fob, talks to the fob, and then the fob talks back. But wait, 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 how does that work? So how does that RF authentication actually work? Is it over RFID? Uh, partially. From everything I've been able to find, and I haven't taken a module apart, this is from research that I've seen and from testing that I've done, is that if you take the RFID piece and I take this key fob, when I get within a certain range of the vehicle, I don't get any spikes on the 900 band or the 315, whichever the key's using. However, if you notice, most of the key, most of the vehicles that have that little feature on them will have a little black dot or something either on the inside of the handle or the outside. Yeah. That's actually a motion sensor. So it only triggers that RFID, basically think of it like the reader that you would use at a building. It only triggers that when you put motion around the door handle, mm. at which point, if the key fob is within proximity of that, then it communicates to the key fob and then the key fob sends a signal to unlock the door. And does it send that signal over 900, over 315, or over RFID? That we're still digging into. I've, from what I've seen and from what I've been capturing, that signal appears to be sent 
a different protocol, but over whatever the broadcast frequency is for the key fob. And the FCC stuff that I've looked up always lists the broadcast frequency of the key fob. I haven't seen it listing the 125 kilohertz or the 137 kilohertz. Wow, that's really But nice. I can't confirm that 100%. I haven't dug deep enough. But you can still start the car and you can still do the remote entry even if I've disabled the key fob. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Oh shit! Oh, 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 there goes coffee. It's okay. It's a rental. Oh, I got ha! the insurance. You got the insurance? Oh well, then let's take it <laughs> in the lake, me. man. Let's, let's put the thing in the bay. <laughs> yeah, that would make a great shot. Hey, there's a Ford going right into the bay. Uh, we're not gonna do that. No, no. We'll, we'll we'll leave that one for later. Do it. <laughs>